What are the lessons in Rage Company for the Marine who's deploying to Afghanistan, since it is a memoir of the war in Iraq? When you read Rage Company, you're going to see that it's really two books. And the first book is kind of what not to do. It's, it's applying conventional tactics to a counterinsurgency uh, uh, and the um, ineffectiveness that kind of ensues. In the second half of the book, you're going to find uh, that Rage Company really interacts with the Iraqi populace very well. Um, and, and you're going to see how that breeds success. So you're going to recognize, as somebody that's going to Afghanistan, the importance of engaging the people, not just kicking down their door, searching their house, but really getting to know what drives them, what motivates them, how they feel about Al-Qaeda, and how they feel about you. And you really have to have that conversation and develop that relationship. So I would say that's the number one lesson from Rage Company. Rage Company as a name is unusual to the ears of Marines. What was the actual unit? What was your billet? And how did you come to be assigned to it? We were actually a Fox Company, 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines. Um, I was the forward observer. Uh, we were a Marine Expeditionary Unit. So I was attached to the unit from 5th Battalion, 11th Marines. So you were an artillery forward observer originally? Correct. But it's clear from the book that you functioned less as an artillery officer and more as an infantry officer and intel officer. How did that come about and how do you feel you were prepared to do that? Yeah, that's actually uh, one of the key points is that I had a, a good conversation with my company commander, Captain John Smith, uh, before we deployed and went in country that, you know, if, if we did get into a combat situation as, as part of the MU, we weren't actually slated to go to Iraq. It was a uh, kind of something that happened while we were in the Persian Gulf. We were moved into theater. Uh, but we had a conversation before we deployed about what would be the purpose of the forward observer cell, seeing that there's not a lot of artillery going downrange uh, in Iraq. And we decided that instead of making uh, me a public affairs or civil affairs type uh, role, that I would be an intelligence cell leader. And so I trained my two artillerymen on uh, some intelligence uh, standard TTPs, and we kind of became this, this um, interlink between the company and the battalion level intelligence section. There's an amazing amount of detail in the book yes. to include recalling conversations, uh, events with tremendous clarity and detail. Did you keep a combat journal or record? How did you recall these events sometime later in order to get them into the book? Right, I actually had a, there were a couple of different things that I had. Um, as the intelligence officer for the company, I debriefed every patrol. So I had a very good log of what actually took place on all of our um, missions within uh, in theater. And then I also had my own personal journal and for every, uh, you'll kind of notice as you're going through Rage Company that certain parts of the book are written by different perspectives. So you'll see some from the squad leader perspective, some from a platoon commander, and then some from my own. Um, and so anytime you see me move to somebody else's perspective, I actually did some, some really full, in-depth uh, interviews with the individual whose perspective I'm writing from. Every book has a protagonist. Who's the hero of Rage Company? That's, that's an awesome question. That's actually the first time I've ever been asked that question, but without a doubt, it's got to be an individual named Abu Ali. You don't meet him until later in the book, but this individual, he's an Iraqi. Uh, he was actually an insurgent before uh, he decided to start working with us. So he was a member of Thawal Al-Anbar, uh, one of the, I would call him a founding member of the Awakening. Uh, and the guy, you, you'll kind of see in the book that there's a couple of instances where he had the ability and had really just cause to stop working with us, where we kind of betrayed his, his trust, um, and really kind of antagonized the, the local populace. But he kept coming back because he hated Al-Qaeda, and he knew that what they were doing was wrong. Um, and so he, was, he loved Iraq, and he was sort of the conduit to provide us with the information that we needed to go out there and defeat Al-Qaeda.